We're talking to the maker of the universe. Maker of all universe. It's an honor just to stand here in your it's presence, God. It's an honor just to stand Come on, we acknowledge you. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. holy. Hallelujah. He's God Almighty. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to worship you. Maker of the universe. Maker of all universe. It's an honor just to stand before you. It's an honor just to stand before you. Now with a grateful heart, anybody grateful? With a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you. Proclaiming, Lord, you reign. Proclaiming, Lord, you reign. You are mighty and you are 
What do the Agards have to say about Bible study? Our journey during Bible study has been very insightful and thought-provoking. Listening and participating with a community of believers has brought us closer. Join us at Bible study on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Just a reminder, we're on Instagram under MyVictoryVCA. If you're not following, follow us today. Then like and comment. But most importantly, share. Share the post. Share the recaps with your community. And help us share this excellent worship experience. For thus saith the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me, search diligently for me, and regard me as more essential than food, so that you may live. Amos chapter 5, verse 4. On behalf of Victory Christian Assembly, we want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day, whether you are here in person or online. We hope your day is a blessed one. Attention, Victory. The NAACP is looking for volunteers for the Juneteenth celebration. For more information or to submit your name, please see Sister Lael after service. Mark your calendars. Christianity 101 begins on Tuesday, July 2nd at 7 p.m. on Zoom, and baptism is scheduled for Friday, July 26th at 7 p.m. here at the church. To sign up, see a gatekeeper after service. Let's welcome the My Ministry of Matt Thomas and Alpha Praise. I begin to pray for those people who are called, but their season doesn't look like their assignment. And the Lord began to tell me, I'll never give up on them. Ah, I'll never give up on you. That's what he began to say to me, I'll never give up on you. So we minister this song tonight. God will never give up on us. hard some days to love myself couldn't find the words for what I felt I was depressed You were right there, you were right there, you were right there all of the time. 
So we're going to be looking in the book of Romans, two different chapters in Romans. We'll start with Romans chapter 12, and then we're also going to move to Romans chapter 2. So we're going to start with Romans chapter 12, and then we're going to move to Romans chapter 2. Happy for everyone that has come today, in particular to our fathers, a, a hearty hello and praise God for each one of you. Um, and happy for all of you that have come out today to hear and see what God is doing. Romans chapter 12, uh, again, a popular scripture, well known, but it is not generally associated with Father's Day, and that's okay. Romans chapter 12, starting at verse number 1. Are you with me? I'm reading from the New King James. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what that is what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we're going to focus our attention, I guess, on the second verse there, where he tells the writer tells us to don't be conformed to the world but to be transformed, how? By the renewing of our minds. And then we're going to skip back to backwards to Romans chapter 2. We're going to just read four verses there in Romans, the second chapter, starting at verse number 1. Are you there? If not, look up. It's up there. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, O woman, whoever you are to judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh woman, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape? the judgment of God, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? I like the way that, actually, I like the way that the New Living Translation actually reads in chapter, in verse 4. Verse 4 you know, the one we read, it sounded really kind of King Jamesy, But if you listen to it in the New Living Translation, what it says is, don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and I think I heard it earlier today, patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? 
Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you? So from this, these two passages of Scripture, they don't necessarily feel like they go together, but hopefully we can pull them all together. I would like to use as a subject, very briefly today, I use as a subject, use your mind. Look at your neighbor and tell him, use your mind. Didn't sound very convincing. You had not lose your mind, but use your mind. Now, what we discovered here, if we look at both of these, and we have to, again, as I said last week, it's very um, challenging to read the scripture without a full understanding of the grammar and the syntax and the definitions uh, that were originally applied in the uh, ancient texts. And we all have access to Bible dictionaries and thesauruses and ways to find out what God was originally saying, but often we don't do that. We rely on what we're reading right in front of us, or we rely on what somebody tells us. But I would challenge all of God's people to begin to think critically about the Word of God, because the Bible tells us, in all of your getting, get an understanding. And so if you have a question or you're not clear, feel free to ask of God or anyone that you know or think that they can get it to you, or just Google it. You'd be amazing, amazed at the amount of biblical stuff that is on the Internet. Now, is all of it right and correct at 100%? No, but you can cross-reference and you can check a lot of places. And we have access to that stuff at our fingertips. I'll say this, and then I'm going to preach. It, when, when I was coming up first as a Christian, a young Christian in college and so forth and so on, you had to buy books. I still have mine, too. I had a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. That thing must weigh 15 pounds. And you had to buy those in order to get, and then, of course, once you bought it, then you had to, you know, like, now you just push the microphone. Uh, can I have the definition of in Greek? You know, I mean, it's just very, very, a, a lot different, um, but nonetheless, um, so I, I would encourage us to do that more and more. But anyway, we look in Romans chapter number 12, verses 1 and 2, where the, the man of God tells us that we're not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And, and for years, you know, I mean, we read that scripture, and that's a pretty popular scripture. You hear that over and over again. For years, we've read it, and it's like, I, 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 God is renewing my mind. And we really don't have any idea what that means. Really, none. I mean, zero. If I were to say, what does it mean to have your mind renewed? Well, it means I don't sin anymore. There are monks living on the mountains of Tibet that don't sin at all because there's nothing to do. <laughs> they don't sin at all. But are their minds renewed in Christ? Of course not. Our sinning or not sinning has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. But at any rate, we see that where it says, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And there's uh, several key words there, but the one I'm going to focus on today is the word renewing. Renewing. In other words, God, what does it mean to have my mind renewed? And so I think to myself, I, you know, it's like I try to think positive thoughts and, and think wonderful things and, and think good things. And is that really having my mind renewed? And God said, no. So I, I, I began to search and find out what does the word renew really mean? Well, if you go back to the Greek that was written there, you will see that the word new, which is right there in the middle of renewed, Okay, the word new, N-E-W, the literal translation in the Greek means of a new kind, unprecedented, novel, uncommon, and here's the one I like, unheard of. In other words, what he's saying to us is when you get your mind renewed, you're actually thinking along the lines that has never been heard of before. That's why I know none of us have renewed minds. <laughs> because most of the stuff that we think, we think it over and over again. What's for dinner? I think that 365 days a year. 
or you name it. What time are we leaving for church? I think, what's my ministry? What do I have to do today in God? Did I pray this morning? These are things I think over and over. That's not unprecedented. That's not brand new. That's not unheard of because I think it every day. You might want to turn me down just a little bit because I feel like hollering. So what does it mean then when the writer says, be transformed by the renewing, in other words, by you're beginning to think things that are unheard of, unprecedented, novel, brand new, different. What kind of thoughts are those, God? And why are we not getting them? And God said, keep going, preacher. Go back to Romans chapter 2. And what we discovered was where the writer says at the end of uh, verse 4, he says, can't you see that the kindness, goodness, forbearance, long-suffering, riches of his, all of his blessings are meant to lead us to repentance? Now, if I said to us, what does it mean to repent, Brother Gary? You say, well, you know, you need to stop doing what you're doing and, and you know, do something else. You need to stop your behavior, and you need to turn that around. You need to stop that behavior and, and do something different. And God says, that's nice, but that's not what the word really means. What does the word repentance mean? The word repentance actually means to think differently. I told you where they're connected. The first one says, you need to start having unprecedented thoughts, unheard of thoughts, novel thoughts. And then he says, don't you know that the kindness of God, when God blesses us, God sends a check in the mail, God and somehow meets our need and he comes to where we are and he's so good and he's so kind and he's so patient and he's so loving. He said, that's meant for you to think differently. All of this is geared at us looking at things entirely different than what we do currently look at them. If I said to us, what's most important? And this is the stuff we say in church, Jazz. This is what we say. We say, I really want the Lord to show me my ministry. Isn't that what we say? You've said it. I've said it. He said it. This is what we say. Or we say, Lord, I want to walk in my Fill in the blank. I want to walk in my calling. Hey, man. I want to walk in my purpose. I want to walk in, 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 in why God put me on earth. And we all say that stuff. And God says, well, that's fine. But let me tell you, that's not what you should be thinking about. What do you mean? I'm a Christian. Am I not supposed to think about my ministry? What do you mean? I'm called by God. Many are called. So I need to know what my calling is so that I can not be not chosen. And God said, no, I meant for you to think differently. And when I give you a big old check that comes down from heaven itself, that kind act is meant for you to begin to think differently. When I heal your body, raise you up off the sick bed, that was meant for you to think differently. I thought it was meant for me to go forth and tell everybody. I got to testify because they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of their testimony. Isn't that what the scripture says? That's true. But my kindness to you was meant for you to think differently. What do you mean, preacher? What, how do I do that? What do you mean? How, think differently? I'm thinking all kinds of good stuff. I mean, I'm not even thinking sin right now. I'm in church. Everybody in here is thinking good stuff. Well, most of the people in here are thinking good stuff right now. Because we're in church. 
You have to, and you're scared that if you think the wrong thing, come on here, come on here, lightning bolt. Because that's what we, that's how we view God as just always waiting to check us. Because if I step out there, that door, there might be a, that's right, a trap door, and I might end up falling straight to hell. <laughs> Which is, is, I mean, when you think about it, it's, it's ludicrous because we don't understand the love of God. We don't understand what his original purpose was for us, and we think that it's all about doing the right stuff in order to get, make sure that God continues to send those checks continues to heal us off the, the sick bed. We, we, I want to do the right thing. I, I, I better, you better keep on praying because you know God just healed you and you don't want to get sick again. Isn't that, I mean, that's how we operate. We assign God these human characteristics. And if you don't do right by me, I'm going to get you. And I just gave you something, you better act right. That's how we assign the characteristics to God. And God said, my kindness is meant for you to think differently. So then the question now becomes, <laughs> what does it mean to think differently? It's like, that's a nice sermon, okay? I'm supposed to think differently. So what? How do I do that? What does that mean? And the writer gives us some real mysterious points in the scripture trying to point that out to us but we overlook it because of the fact that we're thinking about what we are supposed to do for God and he said I, what I'm doing is I'm doing for you to get you to think differently so and we go into the book of Philippians and we find out about thinking what we discover in the book of Philippians a very interesting passage where he says uh, let me see. Actually, he says, uh, chapter 4, verse 8, he says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever or honest, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of a good report, if there's any virtue or if there's any praiseworthiness, I want you to think on this the Old Testament, I mean, the uh, King James says, think on these things. Now, that's interesting, but it's not correct. Because when I look in the actual concordance, Strong said that the word that is translated these things actually is a nominative singular. What's a nominative singular means? It doesn't mean these things. A nominative singular means, means what, Dr. Briscoe? Means one thing. Nominative singular means it's one thing, and it's not these, it's this. So he says, lovely, just, honest, good, of a good report, praiseworthy, virtuous, think on this. What could possibly be this? What is virtuous? What is true? What is honest? What one thing is lovely? What one thing is worthy of praise? What one thing is of a good report? What one thing should we be thinking on? You know. He said, well, truth, Jesus said, I am the way. So right there, you don't have to say any more. Then when he says, worthy of praise, you already know. So when God does good for you, Brother Gary, God blesses you and you name whatever it is, whether it's a check from heaven or whether it's a turkey dinner, whatever God does for you that's good, he says you need to start thinking on him. Why should I spend all this time thinking on God? Because the more I meditate, the more I think on God, the closer we become. Because it's really all about not ministry, but about relationship between me and God. All of this. We go to church every Sunday. We want to have a nice song. We want to play nice drums. We want to have a nice time in service. But God said... All of that is get you, trying to get you to think. Put your mind. He says, I will keep you. 
in what? Per not just peace, perfect peace. How, Brother Gary, how? We live in a horrible world for peace, okay? It's hard to get perfect peace. Just walk down the street. Just go to the mall. Just get in your car. Where's the peace at? God said, listen, the perfect peace is only in one place. When I do something good for you, I want you to keep in mind, you need to start thinking on me because I'm going to put you in a place of perfect peace. My presence and what I'm, what I'm trying to do is get everybody in this room to understand my number one calling is not, Lord, what's my ministry? My number one calling is not, Lord, I want to make sure I don't sin anymore. My number one calling is, Lord, I want to be in a relationship with you. And let me tell you, have you ever been in a relationship with anybody? Of course you have. I understand that. <laughs> I understand that. And so you know what it was like when you were trying to develop a relationship. You thought about her an inordinate amount. Everything you did. Precisely what, yes, it did. Especially as you start getting closer and closer to marriage, you want to make sure you dot every I. Because of the fact that you are planning a relationship with this person. How much more? We're worried about what am I going to do for my ministry. Your ministry, while God can use it, is not what you were put on earth for. Do you, you say, well, wait a minute. My ministry got some folks saved. My ministry touched some lives. What does God say? God says, I would that all men would be saved. What's the next line? And come to the knowledge of the truth. And then he said, we, Jesus, we already talked about it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And so in other words, getting them saved to go to heaven is not the priority. The priority is getting them to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. In other words, knowing God, knowing who he is, relationship with God. That's what we're here for. And so he says, be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, start to think about God when you wake up in the morning. And you say, well, sometimes I forget. Sometimes I think about eggs and bacon. And then let me tell you, put a little, little mark, a little reminder in your phone. Every 15 minutes, it will do that for you. You paid $1,000 for that thing. It will give you a reminder. Every 10 minutes, think about God. Every 10 minutes, just let it, the word Jesus pop up on the screen. I've got to keep my mind on him. Otherwise, I am not fulfilling my actual reason for birth. My, I was put on this earth to get in a relationship with God. I don't care what your ministry is. I don't care what, how good you can sing or how well you can read the Bible. What I want to know is, are you in a relationship with God? And the Bible says, if we walk in the light... As he is in the light, we will have fellowship one with another. Sometimes the reason why we can't get along with folks in church is because neither one of us is walking in the light. We're walking in the church, but we're not walking in the light. You sure do. <laughs> Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Come on here. Okay, don't start me, okay? Didn't know that one, did you, huh? Shine all around us by day and by night. Next line says, Jesus, the light. That's what he says. That's what he says to us. And so God's people, not just victory, everywhere. God's people think that going to church or even going to heaven is what it's really all about. Jesus spent the majority of his preaching time, majority by far, preaching about the kingdom of God, not about eternal life. That's right. He said the kingdom of God is at hand. At one point he said the kingdom of God is in your midst, in Luke. It's right here. It's on earth. It's not in heaven. It's on earth. Heaven, eternal life, is down the road, way down the road. 
way down the road. But the kingdom of God, he said, is in your midst. It's right here. And so you and I, you and I have a responsibility to develop a relationship with the one that we say we love. I love God. How many people love the Lord? All the hands go up. Oh, we love God. We love the Lord. We love the Lord. Really? I put more energy into the relationship with my kids. I put more energy in my relationship with my spouse. I put more energy in my relationship with my dogs. I'm up every morning no matter what, rain or shine. Because oh, the dogs have to... And so does God. God said, I'm here. I stand at the door and knock. Let me tell you, when my dogs stand at the end of the bed and nudge me with their nose, I know I've got to get up and I better let them out. Otherwise, there's going to be problems in the house. I know I've got to do that. And then I gladly do it. I never complain. Well, you know, I might be say so, well, these dogs get on my nerves. But you know what? I wouldn't trade it. For the world. Yet, I put all that energy into getting out of bed and letting those dogs out. And God nudges me and says, get up and talk to me because we want to develop our relationship. It has nothing to do with any new sermon I'm going to give you. Nothing to do with anything you need to share with the people. Nothing to do with anything other than the fact that we're going to continue to build our relationship. And what do I say? For so he giveth his beloved sleep. <laughs> That's in Psalms. <laughs> but really, so I'm going to close now because I said it was only going to be a few minutes. But I want to make sure you understand that your purpose is to really begin to think things you've never thought before. What are things you never thought? I never thought about developing a relationship with God all the time. Why do you think the writer says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Next line, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Is he doesn't, what do you mean? He just says, hallelujah, hallelujah, he doesn't say anything else, hallelujah, hallelujah. No, continually means it's regular, it's steady. Now you have to do other things, but I'm coming right back. When I'm finished this conversation, I'm going back to the conversation I had with the one that I love. You know, it's like, get off the phone, get off the phone, hurry up. I need to talk to Lael. Get off the phone, get off the phone, get off the phone. And you know what? I'm busy on the phone talking to somebody I don't really want to talk to. <laughs> but it's like, hurry up, we got to get off the phone because i got to go back and talk to the one I love. You understand? Now, that's just an example. So what I'm saying is, how much more with God? So it's like, Lael, I can't talk to you right now. Come on here. Now, people look, oh, you say that to you. You would say that to your wife. How dare you? But you'd say it to God. God, I can't talk to you right now. My show is on. I don't know if people have shows anymore. Uh, everything, I don't even know. Do people have shows? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Or my game is on. I know people have games. All I'm trying to get us to do is to start thinking unprecedented thoughts. Unprecedented thoughts are thinking about God in the most crazy times, the most outrageous times, the most inconvenient times. That's all. That's all. God said, I'm trying to change our minds, our thinking, trying to change our thinking. Understand that our thinking is pretty bad. No criticism. Facts, as, they, as Bryant likes to say. Facts. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for those that are standing, those that are, that are acknowledging, Lord Jesus, where we are at this point. It's, not, it's nothing bad. It just simply says, I want more of what, where you, I want more of you in my life. I want more of your purpose, your plan. Lord Jesus, our, our connection. You put me here. You gave me your spirit to draw me to you. You want me to know the knowledge of who you are and understand more about you and, and be in close relationship with you. Lord Jesus, I thank you 
Lord, from moving by your spirit in the lives of your children, Lord. Bless each and every one, Lord Jesus, in this place, in the name of Jesus. And those that are standing, Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for even at, 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 at times that, that we're not expecting that you'll speak to us, Lord Jesus. And at times that we're not expecting you will you will encourage us and, and nudge us, as it were, to, to, to just get into talking to you and, and get into connecting with you and get into really identifying with who you are and what you're doing in our lives, God. We thank you for a more intimate and close connection to you in Jesus' name. We praise you. Praise you for your glory and your presence in our homes, Lord Jesus, in our lives, everywhere we go, Lord Jesus. Lord, when we take a step, let the Spirit of God take a step. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have sent angels, Lord Jesus, to encamp around us, to protect us, because you really want us to be connected to you, Lord Jesus. And there's so many distractions out there, so many things that have interrupted so many things that have gotten in the way of our relationship in Jesus name Jesus name Jesus name Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah come on everybody lift your hands lift your hands if you'd like to give electronically to victory you can do so in a number of ways from your web browser on your computer tablet or phone, use the URL easytithe.com forward slash VCA. This will take you directly to our Easy Tithe giving portal. Choose the Give Now tab to enter the fund you'd like to contribute to and plug in the amount. You can also access the same portal by texting. Text the word GIVE to area code 724-204-1995. As an alternative, you can download the dedicated Easy Tithe app on either the iOS or Android platform. You can also use Cash App. Here is our info, dollar sign Victory PJ. Lastly, you can access our Easy Tithe giving portal through our website, www.myvictory.org. Worship with us at 418 Church Street in Indiana, PA, or jump on our YouTube page for recordings of our Sunday services and weekly Bible study sessions. Stay connected. Visit our website at www.myvictory.org and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube page. We hope you've had an excellent worship experience today.